are about to meet the suspects, weapons, and rooms of the VCR mystery game Clue. Watch carefully, and I'll be back in a few minutes to tell you about the game. Colonel Mustard. White wine, Mrs. Peacock. Mr. Green. Professor Plum. Uh, no, thank you, Mrs. White. What time is it? Hmm, there's no clock in here. Then what is that sound? Oh, sorry, I'm timing a roast. Well, I don't trust her, that's all I have to say. You don't think we're having roast? Not her. That body woman. Madam Rose. Yes. Don't you think it's strange that she should invite us back here so soon after her brother's murder? Poor Mr. Body. Police never did find out who killed him. You don't right. have a clue. Could have been any one of us. You're all here. Good. I suppose you're wondering why I invited you all back so soon after my poor brother's day. Never gave it a thought. I'm anxious to hold a seance, communicate with his spirit. I thought bringing back all his old friends. Oh, there is another reason I almost forgot. The lawyer. Lawyer? What lawyer? Monsieur Brunette, the lawyer. Sorry to be late. Lousy weather, Arnaud. There seems to be some irregularity in Monsieur Bobby's will. Irregularity? You see. I assume everyone here knows each other? No strangers? No strangers. Good. Miss Peach, a stranger. Hello there. It's just poor and canting dogs. I was wondering if maybe I could use your phone. I seem to have got my silly self lost. <laughs> Go right ahead. My car's on the bridge. I hope that's okay. How high is the river? Pardon? Will we be able to leave here tonight? The river's flooded. Sergeant Gray of the police. Folks, the bridge is washed out. Total loss. Washed out? Yeah, somebody parked their car on it. Oh, dear. And what with the rickety timbers and the flood, uh, looks like we're all stuck here for the weekend. Welcome to Body Mansion. I am the butler, did it. One to five murders will be committed here this weekend, and it's up to you to solve them. Ten suspects are in the mansion. Some will be murderers. Some will be victims. I am never a victim or murderer. You have just witnessed the introduction. If you already know how to play, then get on with it. If you've never played before, I've prepared a special introductory game based on the action you've just seen. The object of the game is to discover who are the murderers and victims, the room in which each murder took place and which weapon was used. First thing, make sure everyone takes a sheet from the detective notepad. This fact sheet will help you keep track of what you learn about the suspects, room, and weapons. Just for this introductory game, let's forget about the part on the left that says players. That's an exciting part of the game, but I'll explain that later. Now we look up the details in the casebook. We're going to play game one. Now, let's see. Ooh, three murders. Busy, busy. 
That's three victims, three different murderers, three rooms, and three weapons. That means to solve this case, you must complete the first three lines of this accusation. And to do that, you have to play the cards. There are three kinds of cards. The colorful clue cards, the gray investigation cards, and the black suspect cards. For this game, we'll use only the blue clue cards and the investigation cards. Put all the other cards away. I'll explain them later. Shuffle the investigation and clue cards together and deal out five to each player. Stop the tape until you finish dealing. The clue cards show facts numbered one to six, each pertaining to a different mystery game. We are playing game one, so only the fact numbered one on your clue card will count for this game. At the end of each fact is a scene number to which it refers. All the facts in game one refer to the introduction. If you remember what you've just seen, you can start to solve the mystery right now. Your fact sheet will help. Grab a pencil and we'll do it together. I have a fact that says the woman who wore the red dress committed murder with the knife. That was Miss Scarlet. She's a murderer and her weapon was the knife. Now mark all that down on your fact sheet. Now let's try another. The weapon held by Mrs. Peacock was used to commit murder in the kitchen. Now, Mrs. Peacock held the knife, so that means the knife was used in the kitchen. I can note that by connecting them. But if I know that Miss Scarlet used the knife and the knife was used in the kitchen, Scarlet committed murder in the kitchen. I can enter that right here on the accusation. Now, who was it she bumped off? Another fact. The man who smoked a cigar died in the room with brown tile floor. Green smoked a cigar, so he's a victim. But brown tile? I'll make a note till it comes to me. Of course, the kitchen. Green died in the kitchen. That makes him Scarlet's victim, and we've solved one of the three murders in this game. Are you grasping the idea? Clue cards give you information. You want to keep them secret if you can. Investigation cards give you opportunities. Most investigation cards give you a choice of things to do. On some cards, there's something about personal identity facts. Ignore that just for now. Pick one of the other options instead. You might get to steal a clue card, anyone you want from an opponent's hand. Or you might ask someone to give you a clue card, one that he or she selects. You might ask another player to read a fact aloud, or you might be forced to read one yourself. When you do read a fact aloud, state the scene to which it refers. Clue cards that are read aloud become public evidence and are taken out of the game. Keep them in the top of your game box. Anyone may look at them at any time. Investigation cards must be read, played, and then put face up in the discard pile. Some investigation cards let you bury clue cards from your hand by placing them in the discard pile with your investigation card over them. That's a good way to keep juicy facts secret for a while. You also get the chance to replay a scene. In this game, there's only one scene, the introduction. But in the real games, there are five scenes full of information you might want to review. The game starts with the player on my left. If you have an investigation card, you must play it. If you're holding more than one, decide which you'll play first and which you'll hold to your next turn. If you don't have any investigation cards, then pick a new card from the stack. If it's an investigation card, play it right away. If it's a clue card, keep it and let the next player go. The only time you pick a card is when it's your turn to play and you have no investigation cards. When all the cards in the stack are gone, shuffle the discard pile and place it face down to make a new stack. When you think you've solved the mystery, wait till your next turn, then announce that you're ready to make an accusation. Use this special red filter to reveal the solution in the casebook. Now, if you're right, announce your findings and dazzle us all. If you're wrong, you're out of the game. Return your cards to the discard pile and be a good loser. After you've proved your brilliance in game one, return to this spot in the tape and I'll fill you in on the suspect cards and your personal identities. Now, there are still two murderers on the loose. Player on my left, if you have an investigation card, use it. If you don't, pick a card from the pile. Now, stop the tape. It's time to play. Now you're ready to play a full game. Select a game from the case book. You'll need the investigation and suspect cards and the clue cards that match the chapter you're playing. If this is your first full game, I would recommend playing game two on the blue cards. 
The low number games are easier than the high numbers. To play a real game, each of you will be one of the suspects. And to win the game, you must determine not only who done it, but who's who. Everyone pick a suspect card. Look at it and put it aside where no one will see it. Now write the names of the other players in the columns on your fact sheet. Then write your name next to your suspect. That's your personal identity for the game. The others will try to learn who you are from information that you supply. As you watch the action, pay attention to your suspect. Whenever you're asked to reveal a fact about your identity, you must say something true based on your observation, like, I'm a female, or I wear glasses. There are a few important rules about personal identity facts in your casebook. Now read this section aloud before beginning. Your fact sheet will help you keep track of information. If Joe tells me he's playing a female, I can eliminate all the male suspects under his name. If I learn that Patty is Miss Peach, I'll write her name here. And since no one else could be Peach, I'll eliminate her for all the other players. I can do the same for my own suspect. Any remaining suspect cards are shuffled in with the investigation and clue cards and are counted as facts. Now, if I pick a suspect from the deck, I know that none of the players represents that suspect. I can cross him or her off as a possibility for everyone. Hmm. That means Joe is either Peacock or Rose. Now, if you are asked to read or give away a clue card, you can use a suspect card that you've picked up from the deck. And you can steal a suspect card the same way you steal clue cards. Uh -uh. Not that one. The suspect cards make the game much more exciting. And the ending can be very suspenseful. I'll show you. You've watched all five scenes. You've continued playing your cards until you know the solution. So, write down the murderers, the victims, the rooms, and the weapons here on your fact sheet. Then look up the solution. If you're wrong, return your clue cards to the discard pile. But keep your suspect cards and stick around in case someone asks you for a personal identity fact. If you're right about the murders, the next step is to announce the other player's personal identities. Your opponents must confirm your identifications. If you're correct for everyone, then announce your solution to the mystery and win the game. If you get any of the identifications wrong, stop there. Regular play continues for one more suspense round. Any player who can on this last round solve the mystery and correctly identify all the other players steals the win away from you. If no one can do this, then you must be the best detective after all. On your next turn, complete the accusation and win the game. Well, that's all I have to say. Happy hunting, whoever you are. Chapter One, The Will. and relax. Plum's making popcorn. I will have the professor's formula by morning. I must cut off now. It makes me feel so safe having a policeman with us. Policeman? You. Oh, um, I think I have amnesia. You have had it a long time? Ever since I can remember. I've developed an exciting new formula. <laughs> it's a floor wax. Mama. Actually, actually, it's a lousy floor wax, but a terrific poison. Poison, honey? Mm. Completely undetectable. Just how did your brother die? Well, two of us went on an elephant hunt in Guinea. Is celebrating Reggie's inheritance of the family money. A shot in the back. Oh. Did they ever find who did it? Well, near as we can figure, the elephant somehow managed to get his paws on the gun. There was a struggle. I suppose you were next in line. I don't follow you. The family money. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Scum, Mrs. Fye. You don't know them like I do. Oh, I know their little secrets. I hear you're in business. 
What kind? None of your business. My card. Like the monsoons of Sumatra. Remember that summer in Sumatra? I was never in Sumatra. I think hemlock is quite acceptable. But curare is better. Like my daddy always says, give me a good neuromuscular poison any day. Stop the tape and everyone give a personal identity fact. Then play a round of cards before viewing this scene. Miss Peach. Melba, honey, I've never ever been too well reading. Monsieur Buggy, he made out this will a few days before he died. A new will? You cannot trust anyone. Phooey! It seems Monsieur Buddy suspected you, his old friends, of wanting to kill him. That's ridiculous. Are we disinherited now? No, that's the strange part. I wish that all who attend the reading of my will be declared my legal heirs according to the following conditions. Well, it's nice to know he didn't hold a grudge. Does this include strangers? Maybe you want to leave. What about strangers? It says all who attend. Miss Peach, Sergeant Gray, you are in on the deal. I'm an heiress. That's not fair. The only trouble is none of us can get our hands on the money until all the others are dead. What kind of a view is that? Just like that business in Borneo, remember? I was never in Borneo. Is this some sort of joke? I'm afraid not. It is a kind of longevity game. But something like that will just take years and years. And I must say, I do have an unfair advantage being so young, comparatively. I mean, what are the odds, let's say, of someone like Mrs. Peacock outliving someone like me? <laughs> is it possible to get out of this? This document is to be read at a weekend party in the hope that all of my dear friends will kill each other off. There's got to be a way of breaking this will. Trying to make us kill each other. Ridiculous. The butler's not in on this. Somebody make a note. Before viewing this scene, play a round of personal facts followed by a round of cards. Professor, do you have to do your experiment here? Am I in your way? There are bathroom sinks. But I need the heating element in the, the uh, kitchen. Well, don't blame me if your experiment winds up in the soup. There you are. You're not dressed for dinner yet. What do you mean you're not hungry? I see what you mean. Poison. Poison! Did someone say poison? Oh, really, Mr. Green? Everyone's getting so upset over that silly will. I guess it is silly. The idea of us killing each other. <laughs> silly idea. <laughs> Just for a couple of million dollars. See you later. Is there anything I can do? That's very nice. There's a salt shaker there. Needs filling. Easy as pie. Mr. Body was quite the fuss budget. He used to make me taste everything before he'd eat. <clears throat> Except salad. He never made me taste the salad. <laughs> Are you hungry, young man? Sergeant. Um, Sergeant Gray. Well, how about handing me that red pepper over there? It was a pleasure working for him. <laughs> Twenty-five years. Shame he had to die. Is that all right? Oh, yes, thank you, dear. People just naturally gravitate to a kitchen, don't they? Uh, would you hand me that green pepper, too? My second husband loved my cooking. <laughs> Poor Howard. Amazing the way toadstools can look like mushrooms. Toadstools? Yes. Lucky for me, I don't eat fungi. Can I be of any help? No, no, thanks. The salt shake is done. Oh, my. Poison. You should never leave poison around food. What's that? I thought I saw something at the window. Where? 
There, by the window. How could you see out the window? The shade's pulled. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, this is good for the wine. It helps it to breathe. White wine doesn't need to breathe. Oh, my mistake. Anything I can do to help? No! no. Rabu, my deaf and mute manservant, used to love my cooking. Poor man. How did he die? Train wreck. Good. I don't think the knife hit her. Near as I can figure, the, the knife slipped off the wall, flew across the room, and uh, missed her by a hair. Some sort of freak accident. Are you all right, madam? Hate to think of anything happening to you. What kind of death trap have you got me into? Everything will be fine. <laughs> Before viewing this scene, play a round of personal facts and a round of cards. My, my, what a colorful idea. I'm afraid our little secret is out. Mrs. White is colorblind. The table looks nice. Lovely. Thank you, madam. I'm afraid we'll have to serve ourselves. It's the butler's night out. And she's very strict about it. A bit of self-sufficiency, just like in the Punjab. Where did you ever find Did It? That is his name. Oh, yes. He came with good references. A pair of brothers in Massachusetts spoke very highly of him, the Parkers. Who wants white wine? Not me. White wine for me. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer red myself. Miss Scarlet, a bit of red? Certainly. Your glass. Mrs. White seems so devoted. She seems so. A little white for me. Uh, don't stand on ceremony. Start in. Anyone else? I'll have some. A glass of white for me. Happy to oblige. That poison that I was working with in the kitchen, oh, I felt sure that I'd brought along a full canister. <clears throat> Perhaps you brought a half-empty canister instead. Well, there's your answer. No, no, no. It, it was completely full just a half hour ago, and now it's empty. <laughs> Sure, it was wonderful. Too many cooks. Here's something no one's filled with but me. Good. I'm starving. It looks delicious. Silly of us, really. No, wait. The one with the parsley goes to Madame Rose. Why? No reason. Is, is that plate any different from the others? Uh, we don't want anything happening to your health. <laughs> Vitamins, I guess. <laughs> What an interesting bureau. Oh, you think so? I never did. Mr. Brunette, you're playing little games with me, switching play. How did you know? That's it. It probably could use salt. Not on your life. It puzzles me, Mrs. White, being so nice. The woman hates me to the core. Hates you? Passionately. I'm surprised she hasn't tried to kill me. Oh, dear. Does that mean the rest of us can eat? I've lost track. Does someone want the parsley plate? Maybe we should send out for Chinese. Not Chinese. French food. Pizza! Give me that plate. Nobody's drinking wine. Anyone want so? Before viewing this scene, play a round of personal facts and a round of cards.
it in a dream? Not an empty stomach. <gasps> Mrs. Peacock. <laughs> Thank you, dear. I said did it out for pizza. I thought we were stranded. So is the pizza shop down the road. I don't want you getting any ideas about double crossing me. I've been playing dot sugar. Care to join me? They have a Hawaiian special. Pineapple, ham. Say it! Oh my god! It's the first one. Who's that? It's from the library. What's wrong? The phone's dead. <laughs> so what? Hold set out. Other folks scare me, especially that brunette. Oh, but I know I oh. can depend on you, I sugar. Did you did it on purpose, no. not you. Him? I saw you sneak up on me. You're trying to kill me. It's just a teddy bear. Do you know how many people are killed by teddy bears each year? Run to my teddy bears and lunatic. He started it. I just have these, these fits of temper. I can't control myself. Uh, you were saying? I'll find someone else. My third husband used to have fits like that. Is that why you divorced him? I never get divorced. Ah! I hope that's not another false alarm. All right, who wanted pizza and didn't get any for us? Poor baby! It's a vicious murder loose! Right, and I'm gonna get them before <gasps> they get me! We have plans to make. <gasps> Peach! Come back here! Who's got my gun? My little joke. I thought they might need a push to get things started. Continue to take turns, but from now on, you'll need an investigation card to ask for a personal fact. Chapter 2 The Search. the old will is uh, somewhere in the house. What? Hidden away? Come on, Mustard, let's find it. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> How about you, Plum? Come on. Well, well, what makes you think he left you anything? Are you kidding? Body and me? I like that. We could look for the will together. I don't think. <clears throat> All right. Good. Miss Scarlet. I don't do searches. Oh, some people, they have no use for our money. I have an import-export business. Special Bulletin. An espionage agent working for a foreign power has been seen in the vicinity. Known as the Crimson Lady, this spy is believed to be armed and... <laughs> How clumsy of me. We gotta find the will first. Why? So we can change it, nitwit. Ah. Mm. Another special bulletin. The notorious sneak thief and suspected husband killer, Ma Bluebird, is now believed to be somewhere in the area. Special Bulletin. A patient from the local insane asylum escaped sometime yesterday and is believed to be still in the area. More later. 
Before viewing this scene, play a round of personal facts followed by a round of cards. I got away as soon as I could. We shouldn't be seen together. Why are you staring at me like that? <gasps> Put down the knife! Oh, I know. You want to get even. He tried to kill you, and he deserved to die. <laughs> they all deserve to die. <laughs> it seems kind of funny not remembering your own childhood. What about your family? Uh, I, I don't have a family. I have a birthmark. You want to see it? I guess. There. <laughs> it's kind of shaped like a candlestick. <laughs> Isn't it neat? A little pink candlestick. <laughs> What's pink? Pink, honey. Pink's a color. What's color? I always wanted to ask that. You don't know what... Are you colorblind, Sergeant? Beats me. Just like Mrs. White. Couldn't hide a will up there. Maybe it's on microfilm. I worry about you, Plum. Coffee? When do you suppose we can leave? Special bulletin. The river level is going down, and the bridge should be repaired by tomorrow. Oh, thank you. They're on to you, my dear. If things get spicy, Mustard, I know I can depend on your help. Perhaps. If I am exposed, you will be exposed also. Blackmailing me? Just like in Mozambique. I was never in Mozambique. Oh, you put that nasty thing up there. Insanity runs in the body family. Gallops. Body was mad as a hatter. His sister is no slouch. Have you seen my diamond-studded eye patch? I think there is a thief among us. Daddy, listen. Don't call me that. Daddy, we found the right man. Oh, Sergeant Gray? He's got the right birthmark, and he's colorblind. Mm. Calls for a little change in plans. As soon as those idiots find the will. We found it. We found the will. Everybody. Oh. My mistake. <sighs> you didn't find it. No will. Sorry. Before viewing this scene, Play a round of personal facts and a round of cards. Nitwit, I thought you found the will. This looked like a will. It's Mrs. White's diary. Why did she keep it taped to the drawer? So people like us won't find it. This is funny. What? It's organized funny. It's in chapters. Peacock, brunette. Green. Really? What does it say in your check? Lies. All lies. Let's check yours. There's a chapter on me. <laughs> on just about everyone. Really, Plum. Oh, that was uh, an important experiment. <laughs> uh, Mrs. White seems to have the goods on us. Now, a rotten person could use this for blackmail. <laughs> what do you say? What? You and me can blackmail the others. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Look, Plum, either you help me blackmail them or I'll blackmail you, too. You found the win? No. We did, but we didn't. Uh, but you had to find it. It's right behind Where's it. Where's the win? They say they didn't find it. Don't hold out on the screen. I'm not holding out. We thought we found the will, but something else. What was it you found? A recipe? <clears throat> uh, a recipe. Here it is. What happened? Plum and Green have found the will. They were trying to hide it from us. That wasn't very smart. They ought to know what happens to double crossers. <laughs> Pay to alarm. But has anyone seen my Swiss army knife? Seems to be missing. A lot of things have gone missing lately. Oh, body. Oh, body. Mrs. White, please. I 
I am certain everyone is anxious to hear this will. I, Jean Q. Body, being of sound mind, do hereby declare this my... Paraphrase, darling. Get to the good part. According to this will, Jean Body leaves his entire estate to be divided among his dear friends. That is more like it. Good old body! Divided equally among my hunting partner, Colonel Mustard, my business partner, Monsieur Green, my bridge partner, Mrs. Peacock, my knitting partner, Miss Scarlet, my sister, Madame Rose, my son-in-law, Professor Plum. I didn't know that. I did. And my maid of many, many, many years, Mrs. White. Looks like we're left out, honey. Uh-oh. What do you mean by that? There seems to be a codicil attached to this will. You're not going to like this. Before viewing this scene, play a round of personal facts and a round of cards. What's wrong now? The above provisions will be declared void if my long lost child is discovered to be alive. In the event of such an happy circumstance, all my worldly wealth will go to that deserving child. Long lost child? He never mentioned a lost child. It was a love child. We were young and foolish. Him a married tycoon, me a simple maid with mediocre references. I was determined to raise the baby on my own until, oh, gypsies, gypsies came in the middle of the night and stole our baby. Just what did this baby look like? Well, it, it was small. Were there any distinguishing marks? A birthmark on the left leg in the shape of a candlestick. Oh, I... Oh, my stars! That's me, Mama! Look! You? Of course, see? That's a candlestick. Body's little girl. Rich girl. Congratulations, my dear. Long life and happiness! It's been nice knowing you. Could have sworn we had a boy. <laughs> in five minutes. Oh, I like to have something to hold. Something from each case for the vibrations. Oh, oh thank you, dear. Ah, you're a widower. Your wife died. Oh, tragically. Yes. Oh, dear, you're lucky it never came to trial. Your receipt... Oh, Mr. Green. Hmm, fairly new. Not too many vibrations. Although, the man who used to own this swindled out of his life savings. Where's my receipt? Oh, oh. Oh. oh, you had an accident in Sumatra. And you are not what you pretend to be. Ah, uh, uh, your name isn't Peach, and you're French. Uh, the gypsies who stole me, they were French, oh. uh, from the south of France. Hmm. Oh, you're not a very good knitter. How dare you? And you're an enemy spy. So? Oh. This isn't yours. I'm sorry. Um, I don't think I have anything on me that's mine. You're a Sikh woman. You're no prize. Oh, my teddy. Oh. oh, you have a deep secret in your past. Which secret? Uh, what secret? Oh, can't tell. It's coming through in French. Mm. 
Um, oh, uh, uh, now, can you tell me something about my past? Uh, yeah, you, you don't want to know. Oh, oh, your diary. It tells of the people in this house. Terrible things. Anything else? Uh, you should never wear horizontal stripes. Before viewing this scene, play a round of personal facts and a round of cards. Um, about your birthmark, um, Mrs. White couldn't have had twins. I, I don't think so. Well, remember this morning when I showed you my birthmark? You've got one, too? Oh, I showed it to you. Sergeant, <laughs> your memory must be going now. Oh, I think it's time we got to the seance. Mother, honey, let's have a chat. Why don't we have our reunion later when there are plenty of people around? We'll have it now. <laughs> Tom Hiddleston. Miss it a mumbo jumbo. The Colonel is a non-believer. It will be very fun. Oh, uh, I'm sorry I'm late. Would you shut off the lights, please? Don't join hands, not yet. Place them palms up open to the vibrations. Speak to our so spirits. Is there a spirit present? Yes. To whom do you wish to speak? Peacock. Me? Toadstools. Toadstools? It's my second husband. Tell him I'm not here. Hello, spirit. Howard. Howard, uh, dear. She's not in right now. Uh, could we take a message? Murder. Murder. Peacock. Another one. Why did you kill me? Joshua? Alvin? No, Murray. Murray, it was an accident. Why? Peacock. I was your husband. Murder. You killed Murder. me. A lot of husbands. <laughs> run across anyone named Reggie, I'm leaving too. Dear spirits, help me to contact my brother. John Body, I'm seeking your murderer, and I need your help. Murderer? You, you can't ask the dead who killed him. That's cheating. Mm -hmm. Who said that? Uh, it's, uh, it's coming from Brunette. Revenge is my death. That's Body's voice. I was killed in the billiard room with the lead pipe. And the murderer is... <gasps> Who did that? Everyone stay put. Keep away me. What? What is happening? Someone turn on the lights. <laughs> investigation card to ask for a personal fact. Chapter 3, The Secrets. What are you doing? Burning the wheel. They're all trying to kill me. Little fool. She burned up the wheel. Oh, no, not again. Truth? A truth. There wouldn't happen to be a third wheel lying about somewhere. As a matter of fact, there is. Got another murderer? Uh, I don't feel right about this. Shut up. Collect that first installment tonight. No checks, no credit cards. This is for you. And, uh... Thank you. This is for you. No checks. A credit cards. Mm. 
you cheated my son out of his inheritance. Prepare to die. It's for you. <clears throat> you will be killed by Teddy Bear's vengeance? I wouldn't take it personally. <clears throat> it's a photostat. You are responsible for your wife's death. Prepare to die. If that's the way he wants it. This is very interesting. You know, we, uh, we spend more time listening to Wills. It is a kind of contest. Terrific. What kind of contest? I have come to the conclusion that everyone has a dark secret. Some corner of their past they would kill to keep hidden. I hereby will my entire estate to the one individual present who can unearth the most secrets about the others. How about that? Whoever knows the most secrets. <laughs> Nobody's rummaging through my past. Not if they know what's good for them. At the end of 24 hours, you will reveal what you have learned about each other. Void where prohibited. I certainly don't have secrets. I'm afraid my brother was a dead melodramatic, <laughs> dark secret. <laughs> Before viewing this scene, play a round of personal facts followed by a round of cards. Trust her, Plum. We know what you're after and it won't work. Oh, did you hurt yourself? Tremendously. Huh? Ah, well, let's uh, go into the kitchen and put some butter on it. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. You're not finding out what's in this diary. Contest is mine. I was... I must find my brother's killer. And you're the only two I can trust. <laughs> What about this death threat? Picky, picky. I need your help. The only way to be sure we have the right person is to kill them all. Welcome to our program. Tonight, we'll show you how to sharpen a knife. Special bulletin. We have just received this update on the escaped homicidal maniac. Officials now confirm that the patient is a male in his mid-twenties. He is thought to be wearing a policeman's uniform and is considered dangerous. Officials refuse to reveal his identity. Sergeant Maybe he has amnesia and wouldn't know his own name anyway. Darn. Now back to our program. 
Before viewing this scene, play a round of personal facts and a round of cards. The homicidal maniac! Oh, oh, I knew I was forgetting something. Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, do you know where I can find some bullets for this? I keep several rounds of ammunition in my suitcase. Oh, this bedroom on the left. Oh, uh, I'll be right back. Ah! Oh, big help. What did you want me to do? Wait until he realized he had bullets in his own holster band? Oh. Come on, quickly! <gasps> My phone? Scheduling a party the same weekend a maniac escapes. He was out to cheat y'all, did you know that? Beach! I didn't come by accident. He planned on the first wheel being destroyed and made me pause as a legal heir. He's not even a real lawyer, but he is my daddy. You're fresh! I knew it! Me, my actual name is Pesh. Malba Pesh Brunette. You want to tell secrets, little girl? I'll tell you secrets. You are not my daughter, so there! Papa, what are you saying? And I am not French. I adopted you many years ago in Paris. I tried to be French for your sake, my chérie. I even bought this silly accent from an old pastry chef. No! Isn't Body's child, then who is? Sergeant Gray. He oh. is my nephew. That maniac is my son. He has the candlestick birthmark. He is colorblind like you. And he has one more thing inherited from his father. Insanity. Of course. All the bodies are insane. What do you mean by that? No offense. We are not insane, are we, Teddy? We just like to have a good time. Sharpen both edges of the knife uh, evenly. Oh, okay. Keep constant pressure on the blade uh -huh. as you draw it slowly across the stone. First one edge, then the uh -huh. other. That's it. Successful carving. The body family is perfectly normal. I'm going to kill you for that. Kill all of you. You all deserve to die. <laughs> we forgot to barricade the other door. I'm getting hungry. Let's barricade ourselves in the kitchen. Wait. Before viewing this scene, play a round of personal facts and a round of cards. What isn't poisoned around here? I'd like a little honesty. Stick to the canned goods. Perhaps we do a petite casserole. I liked you better before. Show sure enough, honey bird. What are you doing? Someone must have planted it on me. Plum. That's my diary. Plum took it. Oh, no, you don't, Green. I have had enough of your conniving. You, you, you want to know what his secret is? You wouldn't dare. Let me guess. An underworld mobster. Businessman. Ladies lingerie. He used to be a mobster until they caught him skimming money off the top. Now he's on the run. I'm sure I can trust you good people not to let Big Louie know where I am. All depends. Big Louie has put a price on Monsieur Green's head. One million dollars. Alive or dead. Generous. Thanks a lot, Plum. You want to know what Plum's secret is? Uh, don't tell. We know. He was married to Monsieur Buddy's daughter. Yeah. Did you know about him killing her? That's right. He was doing experiments in the laboratory. It was important research. And in the middle of one experiment, he suddenly realized that he had run out of white rats. The research had to be done. Holy Hannah! So he fed the experimental substance to his wife instead. She would have died anyway. Another 40 years or so. My diamond studded eye patch. I was wondering what happened to this. I like to take things. It supplements my income. Is that Mrs. Peacock's secret? Yes. Not quite. She also likes to kill off her husband. Are you happy now? Oh. <laughs> 
as long as we're telling secrets. Muster, don't. Oh, dear Miss Scarlet is a spy. Well, we all sort of assume that. For what country? All of them. I freelance. Your assignment here is to steal Professor Plum's formula over my dead body. You expose my identity and ruin my assignment. Well, now it is your turn. Everyone ready to hear secret of Colonel Muster? You wouldn't! Madame Rose! You! Madame Rose! Before viewing this scene, play a round of personal facts and a round of cards. Mustard is out of work, spy. And do you want to know why he is out of work? I say, Scarlet, that's not cricket. Head wound, years ago in Sumatra. Doctors had to put steel plate in head. But doctors make one mistake. Don't embarrass me, please. Steel plate was magnetized. <coughs> See, magnet head. Laughing stock of espionage world. Bullets and knives all attracted to his head. Who would hire a spy like that? <sighs> Ah, for ten years I've tried to live it down, and now you bring it all back out into the open. I'll kill you, Scarlet. Talk is cheap. I'll kill you all. <laughs> Never teach her to laugh at me. <laughs> How did he get out of here? Because you forgot to barricade the other door. Me? Terrific. Now we have three wild killers on the loose. <laughs> yourself at the end. <laughs> Continue to take turns, but from now on, you'll need an investigation card to ask for a personal fact. There, Pilgrim. Barker Brothers has more news than. Well, hell, this is as big as the sky. Pretty big, the sky. That's right, Duke. It's rich little charades. A VCR version of one of America's most popular party games. At reasonable prices. Rich Little's VCR Charades game. The fun new way to keep your friends guessing for hours. Look for it where fine games are sold. <laughs> 